Now, I want to see if you can help me understand what kind of image would we have in our mind for this guy, this guy down here, okay? Now, to help you understand the picture in my head, it's just one of many, I want you to think of it kind of like this. Right? When you do negative one over and over and over again, you're just going on, off, on, off, on, off, okay? Well, what's I doing if you do this, right? So, new color, okay? What's I to the power of zero? Humor me, humor me. It's a number, it's just a single number, and we know anything to the power of zero should be one, right? That's fine, it obeys all the rules that regular numbers do. Okay. Well, what if I just do one of them? Well, that's a bit boring. It's, it's just itself. Okay. Now it starts to get a little more interesting. If I square i, based on what I've defined i to be, i squared is negative 1, right? Because i is, after all, the square root of negative 1. You square it, negative 1 returns. Okay? All right, keep going. i cubed. Negative i. Hmm. So i cubed is i squared times i. Right, so it's negative 1 times i. Negative i. Does that make sense? Okay, now here's where it gets interesting. If I, and you'll see why I've drawn over here in a second, why. If I go i to the 4, hmm, square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1. Well, this is, this is i squared times i squared, right? But I know what that is. That's negative 1 squared. That's 1. Right? And then if I keep on doing this, well, I've sort of come back to the beginning, haven't I? Right? So this is going to be i as well. And then this is going to be negative 1 as well. And then this is going to be negative i as well. Does that make sense? So what does this? A switch does not do this. A switch only has two spots that it can go. What's this doing? Now, to help you, right? I want you to remember that in addition to having this idea, we diagrammatically represent, you know, um, negative numbers, integers, on a number line. You want to draw this. On a number line, right? So we say, okay, 1, negative 1. Here's the positive direction. And here is the negative direction. Okay? Now, I notice that this i going through i over and over again and this negative 1, they're actually related to each other, right? If you do i twice, you get to negative 1. And then if you do it another couple of times, you come back to 1, right? So this, it goes on and off. This, you've got to press it four times before you get back to your original spot, right? So therefore, it's kind of like from here, if you press the button twice, you get to here. And then if you press it another two times, you'll come back to where you started. Okay. What would it look like to do something four times? What kind of thing could you do to a number four times that would get you in all different spots through the first three times, but then on the fourth time, you're back where you started? And the picture I've got is kind of like a circle. It's kind of like a quarter turn, right? It's like, okay, I start in this direction, and I'll do one of them. Okay, I'm facing this way. And I'll do my second one, my third one, and my fourth one brings me back to you. Okay? So therefore, this is kind of like, like if you think of, a, of negative numbers kind of like a switch. I think of these, this eye business, I think of it kind of like a propeller. With like, well for this, just for this guy, it's got four spots, right? That it rotates through. Okay? So therefore, let me draw this, right? I need more than just this number line. I need to be able to get off this number line. That's what a propeller would do, go round in circles. Okay? So from this number line, bless you, I'm going to introduce a plane. Okay? Now please note, please, please note, this is not a Cartesian plane, right? A Cartesian plane mixes real numbers here with other real numbers, right? And so we call them coordinates. A pair of real numbers and they work together. Okay? But this guy up here, or, or down there, these are not real numbers, right? This guy up here would be I. Right? You did it once, a quarter turn, and it sent you up here. You do your second quarter turn, it sends you down here to negative 1. If you do another quarter turn, here you will be at negative i, and your fourth one lands you back where you started. Okay? So the idea of extending a number plane into a, sorry, a number line into a number plane, right? It's something that was um, it was pioneered by a guy named Jean Robert Argan. 
who was a, I think he was Swiss. So just like we named this thing when it's like, you know, X and Y's, we call it the Cartesian plane. This thing is often called the Argand plane. Because it's got complex numbers on it, we call it, I call it the complex plane. Okay? So you've got this number line, which you're used to already. These are all the numbers, like all of these guys, right? Negative numbers, irrational numbers, pi, e, all these numbers you've been working with for ages, they're all on that line. Just this line. Every single real number is there. Okay? But if you want some of these weirdos, right? They don't fit. Remember, that was the whole point. Like, they're imaginary. Where can you measure them? They're not on the line, they're somewhere else. So we call this the imaginary axis. You've got to get off this number line in order to deal with these numbers. Okay? Now, if you stay with this, remember I said to you, uh, you can view these kinds of things as a unity, but they, they don't mix. They don't mix. Right? So what I'll do is, I can say, I, I'm going to borrow the same language that the Cartesian plane has of like x's being horizontal and y's being vertical. If I have a real number, like say x, and some other imaginary component, which is like i lots of y, okay, then I can map out a position like this. That point, remember I said to you, hey, here's a picture. It represents a number. Actually, you can say it in a whole bunch of different ways. Okay? This picture also represents a number. This guy up here, I'm going to call him z. Right? Z is the customary label that we give to complex numbers. And it's got a real bit, x, and an imaginary bit, i, y. So x plus i, y. This is the first way, just like these, of representing a complex number. Uh, this form has a name. Does anyone know what it's called? It starts with an r. We deliberately don't try to freak you out with the names because just saying x plus i, y in that form is, is fine. It's unambiguous. We call this rectangular form. Because <laughs> it literally traces out a rectangle, right? It's like, well, just tell me where I am and just draw a rectangle that shows me that, right? Just tell me the width of the rectangle and the height of the rectangle and now I know where you are, okay? And of course, that height and that width could go negative or, or negative and negative, whatever combinations you like. But you'll get a rectangle, okay? All right, that's the first way, rectangular form. But it's not the only way and it's not the most special. 